and Dr. Sanjay Ambore, consultant physician from Bhopal, on the occasion of World Hypertension Day on 17th of this month and ongoing Hypertension Week. This speech is regarding education and awareness of patients and common public only. Hypertension is the world's most leading cause of death and disease. So this is the one of the most leading cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide all over. Hypertension is basically elevation of blood pressure above the definite normal level. When heart contracts or it had pumping action, there is pressure over lateral walls of the blood vessel, great vessel. That's why the blood pressure is generated. Blood pressure is normal throughout the life, but of course, whenever the blood pressure is above normal for a particular age or state, it is called as hypertension. On an average, most of the time, 120 by 80 is considered to be normal rather than was considered. But nowadays, of course, 140 by 90 and above it is considered to be blood pressure. And there are two stages, basically stage one and stage two hypertension. And hypertension, what is the most common uh, cause behind hypertension is uh, major, they are primary, what is called as idiopathic or essential hypertension. Primary cause is called as essential or primary hypertension. And second cause is secondary causes. So what happens whenever a patient comes to me, suppose that at the age of 30 or 35, he tells me why my blood pressure is very high, why I have to take uh, all the time uh, throughout the life blood pressure medicine. Then the explanation is, of course, when you are having a family history of hypertension, your parents are suffering or brother or sibling are suffering, or if you are obese, of course, if you are having overweight or there is some personal risk factor or habitual risk factor, these are the things which lead to early occurrence of primary hypertension. Otherwise, what happens in so many cases that hypertension is because of some other causes, what is called as secondary hypertension or endocrine causes. So these causes are basically treatable causes. So if the cause is treated behind occurrence of secondary hypertension, then the blood pressure is cured. Otherwise, blood pressure is a chronic disease which needs to be controlled only. There is no permanent cure. And if the blood pressure is well controlled within the range, then of course there are many complications which can be avoided, primarily cardiovascular, cerebrovascular, renal, and of course, there is so many peripheral vascular diseases. These can be avoided and patient can lead up to a healthy and normal life. So basically, what are the tips which can prevent the patient from, of course, early occurrence or early onset of hypertension? So basically, patients are educated or advised to take low salt diet. So regarding salt, I will make it clear. Salt consists of sodium and chloride two parts. So sodium contained in a simple teaspoon or five gram, five ml of spoon is 2.5. And of course, chloride is 2.5. So per day sodium consumption should be up to 2.5 to 3 gram. And total salt consumption that contains sodium and chloride should be around range of four to six gram or five gram on an average. So low salt definition is cutting over salt, not stopping over. Sometimes patients do stop their salt intake totally. So they land up with so many problems, weakness and other things. So first of all is so low salt diet. In other ways, low salt diet can be avoided if you avoid preservative food, if you avoid uh, ready to cook food or just pickles and chutney, achar, all these things. And of course, you can avoid uh, uh, fast food or fatty diet, trans fat. That is another uh, part of management that is called as low fat diet. So other than low salt, you have to take low fat diet. So fat content is to be well in a controlled manner. What is called as the repeated frying or repeated uh, cooking with the same oil leads to trans fat generation. And trans fats are very dangerous for our body. And of course, they are lead to early occurrence of hypertension and cardiovascular diseases and so many complications. So cutting over salt and of course, salt which contains more of monosaturated fats 
rather than polysaturated fats. So, salt, uh, so the oils which are uh, there in the market, one can use any refined oil, whether it is soya oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, or what's it. But it's not a very particular that this oil should be taken. So, oils are very, uh, quantity is uh, the thing which matters. So, low uh, uh, oil while cooking in medium and repeated frying and repeated cooking should be avoided. And in that way, we can avoid more and more uh, intake of uh, trans fat. It can be cut in to much extent. Another part of uh, dietary management of hypertension is you have to take plenty of fruits and vegetables. Fruits which are high in potassium, particularly, they help in control of blood pressure. Fruits like kiwi, banana, apple, sweet lemon, spinach, all these foods, and of course, green leafy vegetables also among the vegetables. These are the foods or vegetables which contains high potassium. So if potassium content is high, these food items or these fruits and vegetables are considered to be better for a healthy life and of course to avoid hypertension and its complication. So this is called a dark green leafy vegetables, fresh fruits, seasonal fruits should be consumed in abundant amount and lot of fluid or water intake should be taken then there. So dietary part of management consists of fruits, vegetables, and of course, low salt and low fat diet. That is very important part of management. Other than dietary management, next part comes lifestyle management. That is very important part of uh, uh, hypertension control because nowadays sedentary lifestyle habit, cause potato like habit, eating and snacking in front of TV and sitting all together for long, long hours leads to central obesity, leads to inactivity in the body. That is the major problem behind early onset of diabetes in young and middle-aged population. So one has to remain physically active and at least 30 to 40 minutes a day. Even if you are exercising five days a week, five by seven, that, that is also very much sufficient. So any form of exercise can be adopted whether it is aerobic exercise, yoga, meditation, cycling, swimming, walking, brisk walking, or whatever, whatever you like. But the lifestyle modification in the form of physical activity should be continued. And physically being active, your muscles, your joint, and body part is everything active. And that maintains your uh, blood pressure. And of course, related things are not there. Because in long term, if blood pressure is not controlled, it leads to so many complications and complications are very much uh, and it is the third most leading cause of death and hypertension is considered to be silent killer. Why silent killer? Because sometimes presentation or symptoms of hypertension may not be at all. So many times patient comes to me or he goes for a checkup for some insurance policy or some medical routine checkup, suddenly blood pressure is found to be high on routine examination. So this is what called a silent killer. And sudden and first time appearance of blood pressure, repeatedly on repeated reading and repeated setting, it is seen that blood pressure is on consistently higher side. Otherwise, what happens in most of the time, blood pressure patients, they do present with headache and giddiness. But it is not very particular or uh, all the time. Headache particularly in the morning hours, if you have taken a sufficient quantity of sleep, in the occipital or backside of your head, headache is there, any blurring of vision, eye symptoms there, giddiness is there. So these are the initial uh, symptoms which do present in hypertensive patient. But even if these symptoms are not present and your uh, blood pressure measurement, routine checkup is found to be high, you should consult your physician, you should go for repeated BP checkup and not only consultation, the required investigations or whatever test is written to you, that test should be followed in the form of kidney function test, electrocardiogram, echocardiography, color doctor, color doctor, even uh, fundus examination, retinopathy by an ophthalmologist is must, uh, other than routine biochemical test, urine test, ultrasonography of kidney and all these uh, normal parts. So investigation part, if it is advised, and on the even very first visit, it should be particularly done and patients should come for a proper follow. What are the factors in a hypertensive patient that can be controlled or modified. 
there are some factors which are called as non modifiable factors like genetic factor your age your tendency to develop hypertension because of sibling or your parents are have hypertension that cannot be changed on the other hand modifiable risk factor like sedentary lifestyle so lifestyle modification must that can be very well controlled your eating habits can be controlled your habit of smoking or your habit of alcohol intake that is all the thing which you can modify so these are all the things which one can modify and can avoid or prevent the occurrence or the occurrence of hypertension even if he is hypertensive he has to be very disciplined and dedicated uh, lifestyle measurement and modification in the form of a regular exercise and of course low salt low fat diet plenty of fruits vegetables and of course follow visit to the doctor from time to time because if hypertension is not taken well care of it can end up in so many complications like myocardial infarction angina in heart like cerebrovascular accident stroke infarct or hemorrhage in brain and of course sudden loss of vision in eyes and sometimes renal complications or kidney failure in the form of chronic renal failure so these are the various systemic complications so from uh, my side this is my message to common uh, public or patients that once they are diagnosed with hypertension they should follow particular medicines or pharmacotherapy advised by their doctors by their consultant but along with medications this part dietary and of course dietary part and lifestyle modification exercise all these things are very much essential so patients education and awareness in this part is very important so that they can maintain a healthy and good quality of life and they can avoid long term complications and they can be free of most of the symptoms and they can lead a good life with that i will end my presentation thanks Thank you.